Hey everyone, this is Exploring Fiction, and welcome back to another video. Hey, before we get to the video, check this out. 99% of my viewers are not subscribed. If you're a part of that 99%, please consider subscribing, as I would love to have you here. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So, in today's video, I just wanted to give you my spoiler-free and spoiler-filled initial thoughts of The Daily Wire's newest film, Terror on the Prairie, starring Gina Carano and Cowboy Cerrone. So, the first little section of this video is going to be spoiler-free, and then it will transition into spoilers, but I will let you know on screen and just talking about when that section is going to come up. So, you don't have to worry about that for now, and if you want to get to the spoiler-filled section, I will leave a little timestamp for when that is. Anyway, let's get into my initial spoiler-free thoughts. So guys, I thought Terror on the Prairie was probably The Daily Wire's best film yet. I, I thought that the plot was was very good and at at sometimes it w it wasn't confusing but there was a good little mystery as to why certain events were happening or why these outlaws were threatening Gina Carano's character and her family but i thought it unfolded well and by the end you really had an understanding of that this was a more personal story than you thought i thought that the acting in this the characters slash the acting was the shakiest part, which was to be expected in a movie led by two two fighters in Gina Carano and Cowboy Cerrone. But I thought that Nick Searcy absolutely carried the movie as the captain, the main villain. I thought that Gina Carano's character of Hattie McAllister and Cowboy Cerrone's character of Jeb McAllister, they, they were... They were intriguing and fun characters to watch, but the acting and the execution of some of the lines and the emotion just wasn't there for me and didn't hit. The You couldn't see the emotion or feel it in their words on a lot of the lines or in a lot of the scenes, so that for me was the biggest miss about this film. And then the final gripe I have is just the lack of music throughout this film. And I understand it's kind of setting up a real a gritty real tone for this movie but I think that it definitely could have used at least a little bit of music throughout like it doesn't have to be some big cinematic score no 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 not by any means but they could have used something to accompany or complement the the grittiness of it now I so I understand what they were going for with no music at all but I feel like music definitely would have added something so that ends the spoiler free section of this video and now we we'll, we will be transitioning into some mild spoiler talk. So if you have not seen this film and you still want to, you have been warned. And so like I said, I wanted to go into the plot first. So for me I thought the beginning of this movie with seeing their daily life, I thought it was necessary. But I just thought it was executed kind of slowly, and the pacing kind of dragged. Until the main villains showed up at at the McAllister household, or homestead. I thought this film kind of dragged. And I, I think, like I said, I think it was necessary to show what their life was like, and show it, it being so difficult, just to give us an idea of of life at that point in time. However, I think either music or a better montage or better better cuts between better transitions between scenes would have done this section of the movie much more good. But like I said, once the main villains, the main gang of outlaws gets to the McAllister household, everything just picked up for me. The action was was exciting and more intense than exciting, I would say. It was more akin to a thriller than an action movie, per se. And then once you find out the real reason as to why they're threatening to harm this family, about how Jeb, played by Cerrone, 
was part of the troop that accidentally killed the captain's daughter, who is, the captain is the main antagonist, and it kind of ties all into the Civil War, that to me was super compelling, and the, the end of the movie, the climax and the, really the entire latter half, was much, much more enjoyable. Now moving into the characters, like I said before, Heidi McAllister and Jeb McAllister were, were both solid characters, but the execution by Cerrone and Carano just kind of wasn't there for me. It was still a little wooden, or a little, not melodramatic, but you couldn't feel or see the emotion in their delivery. Nick Searcy playing the captain was just outstanding, fantastic. Every scene he was in, he stole. And one thing I will say about Cowboy Cerrone's character of Jeb McAllister, though, is that I was finally happy to see a movie where I could feel like the male hero was an archetypal masculine character who was going to who you knew wasn't going to be undermined purposely, and who you could depend on as being a strong presence. Like, I love Gina Carano, and I love her character of Heidi McAllister, and how tough and gritty she was. She was great. She showed that, like, a feminine force is still tough and can stand up to evil. But you always have this feeling in the back of your mind that Jeb McAllister is off in town, and he's going to come home at some point. And yes, he's walking into a trap, but I just loved how they provided this... Since since it's made, this film is made by the Daily Wire, you know they're not going to pull a Disney and bait-and-switch you and make the the male lead end up being just this mopey, wimpy, can't-do-anything character. You knew that even though Jeb McAllister was going to come back home and be in for the fight of his life... He still had this tough, masculine, powerful energy that he brought to the table, and he was the hero that we deserved. And that's not to say that Gina Carano's character was was not. No, her and her and the the kids in the movie, like her children, saved their father plenty of times, and and they were just as potent as Cowboy Cerrone's character, but I think that just brings together this whole idea that the whole family was tough and able to defend their home from the band of outlaws. But what I'm really trying to just say here is that I was glad to see a real masculine hero who wasn't going to be bait-and-switched or undermined in his in, in a movie. And so that really brings me into my last little topic, which is the lack of music, like I mentioned before. Um, so really, I get what they were going for with the gritty, realistic feel, but I feel like some points just really could have used at least some sort of music. And so that's kind of a negative for me. In just in some parts, I would really could have done with some music. And if there's ever some sort of like YouTube edit where someone puts some music behind some of these scenes, I would definitely give that a look. So guys, those are my thoughts, spoiler-free and spoiler-filled, of Terror on the Prairie from The Daily Wire. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment below if you've seen the movie, or if you haven't, let me know what your, what your thoughts are about this whole thing. And subscribe if you're new here, I would love to have you. And like always, I will see you next time.